everyone who has been supportive in this challenging time. Second thing I want to say is that I apologize to all of the women that has been affected by this situation. This situation is a really tough situation, a really, a really uh, serious situation and allegations that has been uh, bestowed upon me. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna address every single thing that you think you know. She said, my mother and my grandmother is wicked, yo. They really voodooing me to stay with this man. So this is something that they've been into, obviously. So the guy that she was dealing with, which is her niece's uncle, when we decided to get serious, she told me, I don't know if this is the story, I don't know if this is correct, but she told me that this man was threatening her to put out her sex tape. The sex tapes that he has with her, he was threatening her. He said he was going to um, make paper. He's going to print papers with her nudes and put it all over the hood because she's originally from Schenectady and Empire. So she was going to put he was going to put it all over there and all of that. As a kid growing up. I watched my mother. We went to my father's house and my mother went to to tell him that I needed a bicycle. I was six years old. She went to his house. She told my father, your son needs a bicycle. Your son needs a bicycle. And my father looked out the window and he told her that if he comes downstairs, she's going to regret it. My mother and my father wasn't together at the time. He had his family. My mother had her people. And that's what it was. But I remember it like it was yesterday because this is something that I've lived through all my life. I was six years old. And these things I've confided into Kirby with. My father came downstairs with a machete in his hand. The story that I was told was that he tried to hit her with the side of the machete. But he chopped my mother's hand and my mother's hand was hanging from a thread. Then I sat there as a six-year-old child and watched that whole thing. I told her I was molested as a child from a male family member. And she took that and she used it as ammunition. We had an argument. She told me that I'm a she told me that my mother allowed somebody to molest me for four years. She threw all of that in my face. She hacked into my computer, found my password, and she was looking through my texts. And I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not gonna sit here and play like I'm a saint, but I'm gonna tell you the truth. After the conversation that me and Kirby had, where she, where she threw my molestation in my face when she threw me having a smaller penis than the man that she was with before and all of these things that she was saying. You see, an argument is an argument and we could throw insults at each other, but when you take the things that was confided in you and throw it in their face, it's a different level. I was flirting with these people and I, and I, had, I did have a sexual... Uh, experience with one of the people I did and it made me feel so bad but it wasn't it wasn't actual sex it was it was oral sex she was really hard on me about it which I expected I expected her to be harder and I was expected I was I was I was ready for whatever the consequences were and I said you know what people who do this they do it because they have something to hide. And this is when I took her phone. So this is the things that I saw on, on in Kirby's phone. Somebody, so, so, so these are the things that I was seeing. 
I saw this. I saw this, which is the great famous Nate that's in that video. I saw this. I saw this. Otis. I saw this. This is all 2019. This, this right here, this is actually the same ex that she told me wanted to wanted to uh, expose her 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 sex tape, but this is Moto. She was talking to Moto while she was talking to me. December 20, 29th, 9, 20, 2019, he, he pinned where he was and said, here, this is, this is when we went to LA. You, 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 saw the, you saw it and she said she was in LA. Yes, he flew you out. Yes. While I'm on stage trying to make a dollar to feed my family, while I bring her on the stage and telling everybody that this is my wife, you're telling a man that you're going to be back and you're going to see him when, he get, when you get back. This is all when we was in L.A. She claimed that I did voodoo to her. She said I was doing voodoo on her, right? A friend of mine's, when we was going through our problems, introduced us to someone that was supposed to be a spiritual man, right? Me and Kirby both decided that we wanted this man to help us through our problems. And, you know, he, he was a spiritual man and he could pray over us and do whatever he had to do to make sure that we was okay. This man was a Haitian man. We both decided that this is what we was, wanted to do. The man did a spiritual reading. And the man said that the same guy that has been doing, that has been threatening her, put out her sex tape and all that, has been doing voodoo on her. I still have love for Kirby today. You understand me? Now, if anybody knows Kirby, an argument will definitely turn into a fight because she likes to hit people. She likes to she likes to disrespect people. That's her thing. So I put the cover over my head and I'm just ignoring her. That's when I felt boom. She punched me on the side of my face. I got up, I tried to restrain her and she's just swinging at me, swinging, swinging, swinging. After that, the kids got up. She went in the room. She started packing her suitcase. She said, I'm no good, and I'm always starting stuff, and I'm going to leave, and she tried to leave, and all me and all the kids sat down by the pool with her, and I told her, I said, listen, let's put that behind us. Let's put that behind us. Let's not mess up this family vacation for that, that we put together and for, and for the kids. And we all convinced her to stay, and she stayed. That's one incident. I was driving on the highway. She called me a nigga. She want to fight. She told me she wanted to fight. I'm ready. What's up? I said, I'm not going to fight you, Kirby. She said, I know. What you're going to do is cry like a bitch like you always do. Then she said to me, I will run this fucking car off the road. I said, Kirby, do not touch the steering wheel. Three minutes later, she tried to run us off the road. Grabbed it again. She grabbed it again. And then punched me in my face. Repeatedly punched me in my face. Started beating on me while I'm driving. And I'm trying to defend myself. Okay? So, the abuser is trying to act like they are the ones that has been abused. God know everything that was going on and God knows everything. 
So you guys that's out there that sees my life as an entertainment, this is not love and hip hop. This is two people that is hurt, that needs healing and needs honesty and needs somewhere for, for comfort. 